a very special hello from me again as we move into module four which deals with special situations in this module we will talk about presentations and public speaking we will talk about online communication we will discuss working in teams and we will talk about the diverse and global workplace that is such a reality for every one of us today even if we are sitting in our own countries in our comfortable positions at our desks. When we talk about the basic building blocks of making presentations, we can perhaps address our fear of public speaking as well. There are four steps, and if you follow this four-step procedure, you should be fairly comfortable and successful in public speaking and in making presentations successfully. The four P's are planning, producing, practicing, and presenting. What are these steps and what do they involve? Well, to make an effective presentation, these are the basic steps you need to follow. Planning is creating a storyboard. Producing is creating your content and visuals. Practicing is making sure you can deliver your presentation by going over it again and again. And finally, presenting is the time you make your presentation. It is your opportunity to connect and engage your audience. Be sure that you have followed all the four P's of our four-step procedure and you will certainly ace any presentation you have to make in future. Let us begin with planning. Benjamin Franklin is known to have said that failing to plan is planning to fail. Think about it. If you don't practice, if you don't plan, then certainly you are setting yourself up for failure. So let's follow a simple plan the next time you have to make a presentation. It's a three-step process. First, tell your audience what you're going to say. Then actually come right out and say it and finally tell them what you just said recap reiterate what you just said so start by announcing what you're going to do actually go ahead and do it say what you have to say present the material you have and then finally just summarize everything by saying what you just did this would help you be successful with your presentation it's a very simple three-step process, and if you follow it, you certainly cannot fail. Also, when you're planning, think about these things. What is the goal of your presentation? Who is the audience you're presenting for? How can you appeal to them? What is the place where you're presenting? How does the venue matter? And how much time will you have? What can you cover in that time? So. Prepare a storyboard, if you will, of the main points you want to address. Be sure not to miss out on a single main point because you want to talk about something else instead. The next step in our four-step process is producing the material. Remember, anytime you're making a presentation, your content should be simple and effective. Make sure you have an agenda slide so your audience knows exactly what you're going to address in your presentation. Be sure to focus on all the main points. Don't get sidetracked with tangential or other information. If possible, use visuals to support your message. Remember, a picture can speak a thousand words almost. Be sure that if you are using PowerPoint, that the PowerPoint presentation does not become the focus. Your ideas and your words, you are the focus. So keep the slides simple. If you put just one point on each slide, that should be plenty. Produce your slides, your notes, and your handouts ahead of time. Don't wait until the last minute. Be sure to check for spelling, accuracy, language, and relevance of the content. Don't overload slides with too much information and be sure to use appropriate fonts and white space. The next step is practicing. Here, you may want to think about questions your audience could possibly ask. 
Also visualize your success. Remember, you could never underestimate the power of positive thinking. Practice delivery of the content. Practice your style. Practice a, a pausing at the appropriate juncture. Practice your tone of voice and your body language. Practice involving and engaging your audience. And finally, the step of presenting the material that you've prepared for all along is here. At this point, you are up there in front of your audience. This is your one chance to connect with your audience, to engage your audience. So be sure to do so. Make sure your audience is comfortable when you're talking to them. Speak loudly, speak clearly. Try not to read from slides. Make it more conversational. Engage your audience. Ask questions. Get feedback from them if possible. Be sure to pay attention to your body language, your tone, your gestures. So for example, putting hands in your pockets, not the best idea. Crossing your feet or your arms suggests a closed off approach. It's not the uh, attitude you're going for if you're trying to put your audience at ease. You want to go for an open, relaxed posture. Don't point fingers during a presentation. It may make your audience feel like they're being singled out, which is not a good idea. Pause often during your presentation. This gives you time to think, and it also gives you time to reflect on what you're going to say next, what you've just said, how to make connections. But more importantly, it also gives your audience a chance to think about what you've said, to let the information sink in, for them to absorb it, and be ready to take more information in. Focus on delivering one idea at a time. Don't overload your audience with too much information. Now, who isn't afraid of public speaking? If anyone tells you they're not, that's not true. Everyone fears public speaking. In fact, it is said to be the topmost fear for most people. Even experienced speakers become nervous before presentations. And some nervousness is surely good because such nervous energy puts energy into your presentation. Remember, no matter how nervous you are, no one else knows it. So certainly, you can keep all that nervousness under cover. Now, given that we all have some fear of public speaking, how do effective public speakers overcome such fear? Well, this is fairly easy to do. One, make sure you've practiced the material that you're going to go over so that you've mastered the content. This makes it easy for you to present because you know what went before, what comes next, what you're saying at that moment. Nobody knows it as well as you do. This means you have to practice. Also, visualize success, as we said before. Believe that you can do this, and you will do this. Picture yourself giving a powerful presentation to a sympathetic audience. Again, I cannot speak again and again about the importance of positive thinking. The power of positive thinking is a very powerful tool in your arsenal. You may want to even try role play, you know, play the role of this wonderful speaker and your audience, your listeners who are taking it all in. At the same time, remember, you're not, you're not going to be perfect. So deal with it. Be ready to deal with the fact that there will not be perfection when you go present. Also, if you do miss a point, or if you lose your place during your presentation, be sure to continue confidently. Improvise. Remember, you're the only one who knows you've missed a step. So continue as if you've been flawless. Your talk should be audience-centric. Focus on the message and your audience. Do not focus on yourself. And remember, with experience, you can only get better. The next aspect we want to focus on is online communication. In today's world of iPads, tablets, and smartphones, we are all communicating online all the time. Think of the ways you communicate online. 
you're on social networks, Facebook, LinkedIn, Orchid. There are so many ways you communicate online. You communicate through pictures and videos. You ask questions. I often have friends, for example, who will ask, where should I go on vacation this year? Or they'll say, should I go eat at this restaurant or that? They post almost everything. If they are sitting at an airport, if their flight is delayed, if they went on, if they went on a vacation, whatever it may be, they post links to articles or news items they like. They post links about special messages that they think everyone should know about. They post comments on pictures. We do a hundred things online these days. We start discussions. We mark pages we like or pages we create. We join groups and we advertise that. Are the use of our words, the style we agree or disagree in with others in our posts, all of this is the way we communicate online. And this is important because once we've said something, there is no taking it back. So remember that there is no delete or backspace button online. If you've said something, you've put it out there online, on the internet, in the social media forever. You cannot walk it back. So what does this mean? This means you have an online reputation that you need to protect. You need to make sure your reputation online remains intact. How can we do this? Well, choose your networking profile with care and professionalism. If you cannot show something to your family, then perhaps it should not be online. You should certainly not compromise your job or your career prospects. Be wary of inappropriate comments. Think before you post something. Also take care with electronic inflection. In face-to-face -face conversation, your body language gives you away. In online communication, your electronic inflection gives you away. Some examples, well, when you use all caps, Using all capital letters to post a message or send an email is like shouting in talking or in conversation. You don't want to do that. Also, when we put several punctuation marks, exclamation marks at the end of a sentence or question marks, uh, these may not be appropriate when you're sending professional emails or professional messages. So think about what you're posting. And before you hit that send button, Reflect, pause, and reflect again before you send it out there. Because once you've sent it, you cannot take it back. There is no going back in the online world. The next aspect we are addressing is teamwork. This is an important focus because for the most part, we all have to work with one another in today's world. We work with one another face to face, we work with each other in groups online. We work with each other halfway across the world. We are talking to people we've never even met, and chances are we may never meet them. So when we have to work in teams with people we don't know and people we may never know on a face-to-face -face basis, we need to be careful, and sometimes we need to set aside our previous prejudices to make sure we can work together effectively. So what are some real ways to make this happen? Because most of our business today actually happens with teamwork, where teams solve problems and make decisions together. We need to make sure our communication in teams is working well. We need to coordinate well when we need to make reports together, when we need to make decisions together and make sure all processes function effectively together as a team. There is a unique team dynamic that we need to pay special attention to. Remember, different people have different styles and different personalities. There will be clashes. We need to be willing to adjust and compromise. This takes time, effort, patience, and practice. And with all this, your communication skills as a team will certainly improve. No doubt about that. Some ways to be an effective team player include a shared commitment to the goals of the team, a positive and respectful attitude. Start with a smile. It is such an important way to communicate. 
be generous in giving credit to other team members. Listen actively, participate, be flexible, adapt to different styles of communicating, take in different points of view, be sure to differentiate between content and style. What does that mean? Well, you may not like the way somebody delivers their message, but the message itself may be very substantive and of immense value. So be sure you can sift between the content and the style. You may not like the style, but the content is certainly something that you also approve of. So be sure to keep that in mind. Conflict management is also important in teams. If you are somebody who tends to be sensitive, then you may want to keep that sensitivity in check. If you are someone who tends to rub other people the wrong way, be careful. In teamwork, you need to be sensitive to other people's views and thoughts. Feedback is also important. Not only do you need to offer constructive feedback, you also need to be receptive to receiving feedback in a positive way. Ask questions when you're in doubt. Clarify. Take help from colleagues and coworkers. Also be sensitive to gender issues. There is cultural and gender diversity at work, so you need to be mindful of that in the workplace. And that brings us to the final topic in this module, which is that we all work in a diverse and global workplace. There is no escaping that. We don't just work with people who think and eat and look like us. We could be communicating with people who are all the way on the other side of the globe. We could be talking to them on the phone. We could be having video conferences with them. We could be communicating with them via emails or instant messages. Given that we work with people whom we may not ever meet, we need to be careful how we connect with one another in this global and diverse workplace. Cultural difference is a reality today, but global oneness is the target we are aiming for. We need to be part of that movement. We need to embrace and respect diversity. That way, it's a win-win for everyone. Our success depends on our ability to communicate well with people from different cultures, different nationalities, different ethnicities, people who speak different languages. They may have different accents and pronunciations. We need to be sensitive and we need to be adjusting with all the features. It takes patience, flexibility to adjust to different values and different cultures. Gender differences also need to be taken into account here. And then remember, you are every bit as different and foreign to someone you consider foreign as they are to you. So embrace and respect diversity. That way, effective communication is a given. And that, of course, is the ultimate goal that will result in healthy relationships, productive relationships, happiness, and a harmonious world for each and every one of us.